Another outfit change, another outfit change. Yeah, you know, we had to do a little something for the players. <laughs> so what scene you about to do? Uh, we're about to do a scene where uh, we meet uh, the new connect, which is Chi Chi from uh, Scarface. Uh, and uh, Angel Salazar. <laughs> so uh, the scene's gonna go. We, we, they're gonna get us coming inside of the, this beautiful building <laughs> and uh, coming to the, to the conference room to meet with Chichi. All right, hold on, hold on one second. <laughs> All right, so how you doing? What's your name? Where you from? James C.B. Gray, originally from Mount Vernon. Money on the Mount Vernon, New York. <laughs> I've been in Harlem for the last 15 years. Oh yeah, so? Um, actor, producer, professional drummer, uh, local politician, county committeeman for the 68th Assembly District of New York State. I'm also a judicial delegate. And for those who don't know what that is, in order to sit on a bench as a judge in my district, you have to have my goal. And if I don't give it to you, you will not be a judge or sit on any bench in my district. One of the reasons I encourage blacks and browns to be more proactive in that procedure is because we have so many judges in our districts and our communities that are passing judgment on people who don't deserve to be there. One of the things that, I, that we deal with is uh, we walk through the process of that attorney's history before they even uh, submitted to become a judge, you look at their attorney track record. And if that attorney track record is not favorable, then you don't deserve to be a judge. But so many cases, this thing is overlooked. People pay money, brief palms, cronyism, and all this stuff happens in order for these people to sit on the bench. And in that capacity, they know there's no repercussions for their actions, so they do things that affect us and benefit them. So. People say they want change. We got to go to the to the root and see how it directly affects you, your community, and the people. If you don't get it on that level, you can't be mad at the results that you get. But as an actor, I get in in and out of character in order to maneuver and make things look real for film, for TV. <laughs> but uh, I'm always enforcing the conscious mind and and, and you know for us to to be. Uh, and more enlightened and more involved, especially in the community and dealing with children and in our society. You know, so in that capacity, you know, this is one of the things that I'm really passionate about is the children, the kids. So, which reflects directly on the project that we're working on right now called The Hit Boys Redemption, which is a true story about a crew out of the Bronx called the Valley Mob. And three of the, uh, the members of the Valley Mob are RZA, Jason, and myself, Prince. I'm portraying Prince uh, in the film. So I'm one of the three hit boys uh, who's starring in this project that's uh, going to be an episodic production. So we're working on that right now. Uh, filming a couple of scenes today in this establishment. I want to thank you for allowing us, you know, us, what's the production? Out the trunk distribution. Out the trunk distribution, mad props, you know, big ups. And this is the kind of uh, relationship that we need to have more of in a conjunctive, conjunctive prospect. So we're collaborating, working together, sharing resources. That's really what it's about now. You can have all this and you can have all this, but there's something in the middle that you guys don't have. And collectively you do have, once you start to put resources on the table and a shared resource capacity, and working together, brothers and sisters. That, that's really what it comes down to. There's a lot of entities that have broke through the thresholds of, of uh, um, segregation and the, the thresholds of deprivation in order to overcome and be victorious working together. So I'm always encouraging, specifically, especially black you know, entities and black businesses to work together and share resources in order to make something bigger. You know what I'm saying? There's no, you know, it's, it, we couldn't say, oh, we don't want to do an interview, but where you, you know what I'm saying? Like, that, that would be crazy, you know? And that wasn't even on our mind because we're so into the spirit of collaborating and working together as, you know, people. 
So yeah, this this project is uh, we're working to take it to the next level. We got a couple of couple of names, but even besides the names, we really want to focus on uh, helping up and coming actors and up and coming talent to to be seen and and to be discovered. You never know who's gonna see this, who's gonna be able to take what they're doing to the next level because of being a part of a production like this. You know what I'm saying? Not so yet. Always into seeing how we can uplift those, pass the torch to somebody, you know, carry somebody over and just bring somebody in. You know what I'm saying? And if for those who don't really know the politics of the film and television industry, there's really not a lot of black actors in, in the in the in the union, number one. Mm -hmm. And it's not the fact that you see the same old black actors again and again and again that they're great actors. That's that's really not the case. It just so happens that a lot of the roles that are being casted for when it comes to blacks, uh, they have to be in the union, which mm -hmm. takes it down to a limited demogra demographic of pickings. Now, exactly. on top of that, there's a mm -hmm. if, if, if there's a certain amount of agents that control some of these roles that are being casted for too. So if you don't come through the agent, you know, that, that knocks out a whole nother demographic. So when it gets down, it could go from like a thousand to five people just by going through, okay, separating non-union from, from union, now going into the politics of the, the uh, casting directors and agents. You know what I'm saying? So to give uh, actors a, a, a more, of a, more of an opportunity. This is why the independent sector is flourishing more. A lot of these uh, entertainment uh, platforms like Netflix and Hulu and things like that, they're allowing a lot of uh, black actors to break through. You know what I'm saying? So there's a better opportunity there. And we, we just like trying to open up some doors, man, and do something real. This whole thing really started to become active during COVID when all production was shut down. And I called Phil like, yo, <laughs> now's the time to, for us to do our shit. And Phil was like, yes, this is the perfect time. And by the time the uh, pandemic was slowing down and the, um, the quarantine was over, we had the script ready. We started filming. And that was coming together. <laughs> Hit Boys Redemption. Hi. And my name is James C.B. Gray, J-A-M-E-S-C dot B dot Gray. But on social media, it's just straight through James C.B. Gray, uh, G-R-A-Y. And you can find me Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, James C.B. Gray. You can even Google James C.B. Gray, and everything will pop up. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, definitely be on the lookout for uh, Hit Boys Redemption. And we got, we got another, we got another um, project coming up after this one. I also just produced a documentary called uh, Middleman, which is about police brutality, and uh, that's going to be something big. Uh, I would, I just happen to be in a one percentile of African American males in New York City that successfully won a lawsuit against NYPD. Mm -hmm. So technically, it was uh, a lawsuit against uh, New York City on behalf of NYPD, but still, one percent of black men in New York City have ever successfully done that. I was also also worked for the the, the, the biggest civil rights law firm in New York City too. So, you know, I, I, I knew the law, I knew the land, <laughs> the playing field, the, skate, the scope, and one of the things that I found out along the process of me fighting this case was not only how many, how many black men were successful, very few, but one of the things that I saw was like, damn, just imagine how many young black and brown boys are in this equation every day, don't have the resources, don't have the support system, don't have the understanding or knowledge of what I did. Devastating. And that's what really propelled me more into activism. After that, won the lawsuit, ended up uh, uh, working with uh, Reverend Al Sharpton, National Action Network. Um, matter of fact, he appointed me to launch the Bronx chapter of his organization. I opened, I opened up Reverend Sharpton's show every Saturday morning for about five years. For the millions of people, it was, you know, it was big. Uh, doing civil rights highlight speech. Um, and then after that, I launched the Bronx chapter about 
three years. Then after that, I went on to become the president of the Arca Justice Bronx chapter, which I'm currently doing right now. All right. Okay, you're gonna have to pay me for this one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yo, just stay tuned. We're gonna be having more updates, more behind the scenes footage, and then, you know, all right? James C.B. Gray on all platforms J A M E S C B G R A Y. <laughs> uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, all platforms, social media. James C.B. Gray.